Gang is coming April 17th. The unexpected, the new Ford Mustang at your Ford dealers. It came in with the stampede, but began with stealth. In October of 1962, a mid-engine two-seater Ford prototype made several demonstration runs at Watkins Glen Raceway during the U.S. Grand Prix. This showing launched one of the most covert design and production plans in American automotive history. Division Chief Lee Iacocca had been convinced from 1961 that the American market was ready for a very new product. At the 1964 World's Fair in New York, the Pony Car was launched. Originally named the Cougar, the Adventura, Allegra, Stiletto, Torino, and X-T-Bird, the world came to know the Mustang. The love affair for the Ford Mustang remains one of the most intriguing automotive seductions ever to embrace America. Welcome to American Seduction, the Mustang Mystique. In 2006, Ford released the design of their 67 Mustang body to Dynacorn International. For Ford, this was a first. GM had already jumped into the game two years earlier with the release of the 69 Camaro convertible and coupe. Their success put demands on Ford to follow suit. My name is Matt Cooper. I'm the owner of AutoWorks International and also part owner of Cooper Design. We spend a lot of our time replacing and uh, repairing uh, rusty body shells that customers bring into us because there's nothing else available. And when you're talking in a 35 to 40 year old car, it makes it really difficult to find something that's not been beat up or rusty or been in an accident. So now the um, introduction of this replacement body shell is great because now we can get something out of a crate and start bolting parts on it. So why the desire to build a complete car? Well, what prompted this Mustang build was that we had already built a Camaro on chop, cut, and rebuild. And we wanted to show the general population what we could do with one of our new Mustang bodies. Yeah, I want a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Where do you start? Yeah. Let's do the paper. Start with the hood, I guess, huh? Yeah. First of all, we looked at the hood. They've got a new um, composite hood that has a metal frame underneath it. We looked at that, then we looked at the fenders and various other parts they sent us down and went through the list to make sure that we had all the parts we needed for today's build. We first started putting the hood hinges on and then we just proceeded to put the hood on, line that up, do a quick alignment on it. We just wanted to do a rough line so that we would know how much work was going to be involved to uh, get the car nice and straight and with all the lines to match. There's over 20,000 components in a Mustang. Our body shells for Mustang and indeed Camaro as well are sold as restoration body shells or to rebody an old car. There are those that are going to build cars from the ground up but for ease of, of application, they're sold as a restoration body part. Calling the shells a body part is an important distinction. It's not a kit car or a knockoff. This car doesn't come complete. Every part has to be purchased separately and not every single part is available. Some salvage work is required. The idea is if you already have a 67 Mustang, even a rust bucket, a new shell is a cost-effective way to restore it. There's obviously always adjustment you have to go and do after you put the piece on, and I think it's gonna be minimal. Well, back in the 60s, they had uh, different technology back then. The, uh, they used a thinner grade of sheet metal. Uh, they used a U.S. standard sheet metal. Now we've got a universal standard. They're using a thicker gauge metal, and it's really a much stiffer chassis all around. Reproducing a body that's been on the road for over 40 years means engineers can improve on flaws that took years to discover. Those millions of cars produced in the late 60s were the ideal lab rats for Dynacorn's objectives. They used a 67.8 uh, style convertible pan, so it's now a one-piece uh, floor pan. Uh, and the seat pan goes across, so it's reinforced better. They added the 68 torque boxes in it as well, as well as the 69 shock towers. Uh, so they basically opened up the engine compartment just a little bit more, so you've got some more room, you've got something that's much more stiffer, uh, and it's uh, definitely performance-oriented. Not every part will be a perfect fit. Massaging is always a requirement. The challenge is to make certain each part pulls them toward the correct location for the next, not further the other way. An eighth of an inch at the front can become three or four inches at the back. So pre-fitting early on is an extremely important exercise. Every one of these parts will come off and on many times before this job is done. This car will be unique because it will be a 100% manufactured restoration part car. A true challenge, a unique car. The team, the tools, and now the parts are all in place. Time to pony up.